Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. Today I am going to make myself some personal nails. Uh, that is probably the first time on my channel. I needed some quick and easy nails so that's why I made myself some personal nails. And yeah, you will go through the steps with me and see how I attach them after I have designed them. So I will be using full soft gel tips from Inel Couture. These are the mini stiletto. And I'm going to use colors from Madame Glam. This um, beige one called Abundance and the other one called Still Single. And this cat eye gel, it is from AliExpress. Uh, yeah, you see the color. And this is a uh, gold flake top coat from Madame Glam and I will be using a gold uh, spider gel, the Mirage 3D sculpting gel and Brill Birds chrome powder, gold chrome powder. And I start out just applying the primer. I didn't go in with a base here, I only applied the primer. It works. It works. <laughs> And then I go in with the ab Abundance color. Uh, this I love the texture of this gel. Uh, this specific color here is produced in Korea but sold by Madame Glam of course. And it is so easy to apply and it's so thin and beautiful. It's not 100% fully covered so I do apply three layers here. It's better, always better to apply three thin layers rather than two thick, one to two thick layers. So yeah, the outcome will be much neater if you apply thin layers. And of course cure them in between each layer. Then I go in with the color Still Single. It's a wine red color and it's very sheer, like a jelly color or yogurt color, honey color, I do not know. I am just not fully familiar with these terms of these see-through colors. So the second and third layer here, I only apply to half of the nail and fade it down towards the tip with the ombre brush. And then I go in with this cat eye. I only apply the first layer here. I also fade this upwards into this red color and cure it. And for the second layer I place the tip on this stand because it is so much easier to move the magnet around when I'm bringing out the cat eye effect. So fade it up with my ombre brush and use the magnet to pull out or activate the magnets in the gel polish. And cure it. And yeah, I also apply a fourth layer of the jelly color on top and fade that over and get an even better fade over the, the cat eye gel. And here I go in and apply only the dark wine color to two thirds of the tip. And to the tip I apply the abundance color. Usually this um, cream color does not blend very well into a jelly transparent gel, but it actually worked here. <laughs> I really liked how this turned out. I had to apply, of course, at least three layers of this jelly color to get it somewhat opaque and then I fade it into the abundance color the, and it turned out really pretty. I really love this fade. And I did the same to the thumb tip, so you can just re-watch that. 
I needed some press on nails because I had no time to sculpt my own nails. So yeah, I made these press on nails for a girl's night out. So I needed some nails really quick. And I wanted them to really stay on. I didn't want them to pop off. It was a couple of days before I was going to this party. So I had to make them stick. So you will see later that I will adhere this with acrylic. Adhering press on nails with acrylic is a brilliant thing to make them last for weeks if you do it properly. When I'm finished with the design I will show you how to do this at home. You can do this as a beginner but you need to of course practice to get this properly but it is a way to get press on nails to last forever <laughs> or at least until you need to take them off. And then I apply some of these uh, gold flakes to the tip of the pinky, uh, like diagonal-ish. I applied it quite randomly just to get it, get some flakes on and then I just use this liner brush to place the flakes wherever I wanted them to stay. Of course it has to work, it has to work in my mind. So yeah, it kind of somewhat diagonally. But of course, when you poke around in a top coat and the flakes are a little bit chunky, the surface gets a little bit uneven. So I will go in later and buff the surface of these nails before I apply a top coat. Or I might apply a top coat first and then buff the surface and then apply another top coat. So I'm using the 3D gel take out a small blob like here and I add a little bit or a lot <laughs> of this gold chrome powder and you want to like really work it into the gel so this is the solid gel so you need to really work it in to, yeah, to, to get the pigments all into this gel. And then you scoop it up and make it into a ball. And of course you have to use gloves. This is still gel that is not cured and you would not want uncured products touching your skin. So I'm just making a kind of a sausage, a small worm to place on top of my tips. It kept on rolling off. <laughs> I had to chase it all over my desk, but in the end I got there. It kind of looked like a worm, <laughs> but it, it kind of looked good as well. So that's why it's in the design, I guess. And cure it. And the next one, I did the exact same thing and rolling it out and placing it on and then cure it. Uh, when curing these, make sure that you fully cure them at least maybe for two minutes because the chrome pigment is making this gel very opaque. So it needs to be cured a little bit longer. So I made a mistake like that and undercured it. So when I pressed my tips down, it kind of squished these worms a little bit. So now I go in with the top coat and when applying 3D gel I first apply the top coat around the worm and then I go in with the thin liner to scoop up any excess top coat so that it does not flood the whole tip. And same here. You can clearly see what I'm doing. I'm just scooping up the excess around this worm and cover the whole worm. Yeah, it's a worm, officially a worm. <laughs> then I place them on this tip so that I can buff the surface and make it smooth. Well, that was quick. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> and wipe off the dust and apply some gold spider gel. I'm just placing it 
kind of diagonally, diagonally in a wavy pattern over where and outlining the gold flakes. Two, three strands, that was enough. They look chunkier, but I promise they are not chunky. <laughs> And yeah, you will see more of the filing here or the buffing. The key to buff this is to start maybe on one side and then go over to another side. And you can see there are areas here that are still shiny when I go over the surface. So you would want to buff down so that no area are shiny any longer. That way you know that the whole surface is smooth. And the same here in with the spider gel. And cure it when I'm finished. I also buff the, the middle finger tip. And the same here as you can see I buff the surface and can see that there are dips in the surface where the gel is still shiny but I need to buff it so that the whole surface is matte and smooth and it is very important to wipe off all the dust after you have filed it so that the top coat do not end up with file dust in them. And then I go in and apply the finished top coat or the top top coat. <laughs> and I'm looking a little bit in the light from my overhead light to see that circle of light. You want to see as perfect oval as possible when you're looking at that shiny light that shines in the tips. These gold lines make them a little bit uneven, but not that uneven that it bothers me that much. And here they all are. And now it's time to prep the nails. I go in with the orange wood stick and gently push back the cuticles. And I also go from side to side. I do not push it directly into the cuticles if that makes sense uh, but you want to slide that tip gently underneath the cuticles at the same time while you're pushing it back that way you get to separate the cuticle from the nail plate and all the prep work that i'm going to do here can be done when you are a beginner it's not that invasive and you cannot do a lot how a lot of harm to the nail plate with this orange wood stick so it is a great tool to use when you are first starting out so you can see when you start scraping around the cuticle you can see that white parts are starting to show and that is the cuticle that needs to be removed if that is not removed nothing will stick to it for a longer period because that will soak up water and it will expand and it will make the extensions pop off. And you can see the white parts like this in the corner here. Uh, these should not be in contact with any uh, product that you are going to apply. So these needs to go. So I'm going in with a buffer and I'm using the 180 grit side. Do not use the 220 grit side because that is too fine for the natural plate. You will want to remove the surface shine from the nail plate and you also need to focus on getting really well into the sidewalls and as close as possible around the cuticle area. So no part of the nail should be shiny at all. And when using that half moon side of the, um, the buffer, you will get into it. And I'm going to use clear acrylic as well to adhere the pressile nails to my nails. Clear acrylic adheres very well to the natural nail plates or clear products in general has the best adhesion because there are no added pigments in. 
So I'm going to use Enel Couture's Clear Acrylic and their scented monomer. I love the scent of this monomer. It has a cotton candy smell. Yeah, yeah, I just love it. And I'm also using NSI's acrylic brush. I think it's a, somewhere between 8, 9 or 10. I'm not sure. And I'm using the prep and primer from Inel Couture. And this is my right hand already applied. And first you have to go in with a dehydrator and clean the nails very well. Then I go in with the dehydrator. This air dries quite quickly. If your nails turn whitish, that means that the nail is dehydrated and you can go in with a primer. The primer should not touch your skin, only the nail plate. And this also needs to air dry a little bit. then you can also apply a little bit of primer inside the tips. It is not necessary when doing acrylic because the acrylic and the monomer will stick to or almost like melt into the soft gel tips or tips in general. So then I go in and with very wet beads. I only want a very thin layer. My bead here was a little bit too thick actually. I, I tend to apply quite wet beads and I try to make them even <laughs> wetter, but I, I could have made them even more wet. So you almost just brush a very thin coat on your nails and you apply a very wet layer inside the tips as well. And this is also very thin. You can almost see that I just wipe it off. And then you press down. You want to press it, of course, longer than you would when curing gel. Uh, acrylic usually takes two minutes to set fully. So about a minute or so. So you can see I'm struggling a little bit. I, I did apply a, a little bit too thick bead here as well, or too dry bead. And I try to be as fast as possible so that uh, acrylic does not harden or polymerize. And apply a wet bead inside the tip and get it all over where my nail bed area is going to cover. And apply it to my nail and hold it there for a little bit. These tips are not compatible with my nails. My nails, if you have seen my channel before, you know that my nails are very curvy. So um, I need uh, sculpted tips. If I'm going to apply full tips, I need them sculpted. So these were not sculpted. These are the regular mini stilettos. So I knew that they were going to be a little bit gap on the sides on my nails or the side walls will be missing somewhat. I knew that so I just needed some nails to this party and I didn't care. But you will see in the end that the gap is there. I have already ordered new sculpted tips so I will be using those from now on. These I will be using on other peoples that do not have that curvy nails. So same procedure every time. Thin layer with acrylic and thin layer inside the tips and of course cover the whole nail plate. You do not want to have air bubbles or air pockets where the acrylic is missing because then the water will get in there and it will expand and your nails will pop off. I had these on for almost three weeks before I removed them. I was only supposed to have them on for under a week but it ended up being way longer. So yeah, the acrylics definitely work almost a little bit too well. <laughs> 
But you can do this method on all press-on nails. It doesn't need to be soft gel nails for them to adhere to acrylic. All types of plastic nails can adhere to acrylic. So I'm soon finished here and you will see some pictures in the end and if you hanged in there this long I will only say thank you thank you thank you and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't done that please give it a like if you like this video of course and comment if you want to and thank you all so much for watching and I just want to say sorry for not po posting for a while but I'm actually doing quite well, so I have been way too busy. <laughs> I am sorry about that. I will try to post a lot more than I have done recently. So thank you all for watching. Bye bye for now. Bye bye.